FDA in tears this morning as electoral court makes drops bombshell on them. Good news for President Ramaphosa. In a significant development in South African politics, President Cyril Ramaphosa has emerged victorious as the electoral court dismissed a challenge from the Democratic Alliance, DA, regarding his address to the nation prior to the upcoming May 2024 general elections. The DA had vigorously contested that Ramaphosa's speech constituted an improper use of state resources, unfairly benefiting the ruling African National Congress, ANC, and compromising the integrity of the electoral process. This ruling not only affirms Ramaphosa's position but also poses a serious setback for the DA's electoral strategy, which has been anchored in allegations of state resource misuse by the ANC. The DA's argument hinged on the assertion that the president's televised address blurred the lines between his official duties and his role as ANC leader, effectively turning a state communication into a campaign tool at a critical moment. However, the court's decision underscores the legal complexities surrounding such cases, emphasizing that the president has an obligation to communicate national matters, irrespective of political implications. The ruling reinforces the notion that the duties of a head of state can coexist with electoral activities, a perspective that will undoubtedly shape the discourse leading up to the elections. Following the ruling, DA leader John Steenweisen expressed disappointment, maintaining the party's resolve to hold the government accountable for potential abuses of power. Meanwhile, the ANC welcomed the decision as a vindication of Ramaphosa's actions, asserting that the court has confirmed the legitimacy of the president's address as part of his responsibilities. As political tensions escalate in the wake of this decision, the implications for both the ANC and DA will be far-reaching. The DA remains determined to advocate for reforms regarding the use of state resources during election periods, promising to keep the pressure on the ruling party. With the electoral landscape shifting, the stage is set for a contentious lead-up to the elections as parties navigate the intricate balance between governance and campaigning. But before we continue, I'd like to encourage you to kindly subscribe, turn on the post notification bell to stay updated as we bring you recent happenings from the heart of South Africa. The Democratic Alliance, DA, has suffered a major setback in its legal battle against President Cyril Ramaphosa after the electoral court dismissed its challenge over the president's address to the nation ahead of the May 2024 general elections. The DA had argued that Ramaphosa's speech constituted undue use of state resources for the benefit of the African National Congress, ANC, tipping the electoral playing field in favor of the ruling party. The case, which the DA pursued with vigor, hinged on allegations that the president's televised address days before the elections blurred the lines between his role as head of state and leader of the ANC. The DA contended that Ramaphosa's address amounted to political campaigning disguised as a government announcement and that it unfairly influenced the electorate at a crucial moment. In delivering its ruling, the electoral court found that there was insufficient evidence to conclude that Ramaphosa's speech was a violation of electoral laws. According to the court, the president's role as a leader of the country meant that he had a duty to communicate with the public on matters of national interest, regardless of the timing. The court ruled that no direct link was proven between the address and political advantage gained by the ANC. This ruling is seen as a significant blow to the DA's broader electoral strategy, which is focused on challenging the ANC's perceived misuse of state resources. DA leader John Steenweisen expressed disappointment in the ruling but reiterated the party's commitment to holding the government accountable for any abuse of power. We respect the court's decision, but we maintain that the president must be held to a higher standard when it comes to the use of public platforms in the lead-up to elections, Steenhuisen said. The ANC, meanwhile, has welcomed the ruling. Party spokesperson Malenji Bengamatsiri stated that the court's decision vindicates Ramaphosa and confirms that his address was in line with his presidential duties. The dismissal of the DA's case is unlikely to quell political tensions, with the opposition party vowing to continue pushing for reforms in how state resources are utilized during election periods. In conclusion, the electoral court's ruling marks a pivotal moment in South African politics, affirming President Cyril Ramaphosa's legitimacy in addressing the nation while simultaneously delivering a setback to the DA's legal strategy. This decision highlights the complexities of navigating the fine line between state duties and political campaigning, 
reinforcing the idea that a president's communication can serve both national interest and party politics without necessarily constituting an abuse of power. The ruling not only bolsters Ramaphosa's standing ahead of the May 2024 elections, but also challenges the DA to rethink its approach to holding the ruling party accountable. As the opposition vows to continue advocating for reforms concerning state resource usage during elections, the political landscape is likely to grow even more contentious. This court decision sets the tone for the upcoming electoral battle, with the ANC position to leverage its current advantage, while the DA grapples with the implications of this legal defeat. Ultimately, the dynamics of accountability, governance, and electoral integrity will be at the forefront as South Africa approaches a critical juncture in its democratic journey. Thanks for watching on to the end of this video. Hope this video was very informative and reliable. For more details on related videos, kindly subscribe, turn on the post notification bell, and I will see you on the next video.